So we just recently deployed our Strapi backend to Strapi Cloud. Now let's go ahead and deploy our frontend project to Vercel. If you're wondering, this is part three of the video series where we show you how to get started with Launchpad, Strapi's official demo using Next.js and Strapi 5. This is based on this blog post that I'll make sure to link in the description below. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll make sure to link to it in the card above. But today we're going to take a look how to deploy our Next.js project to Vercel. If you don't have an account yet, go ahead and create one following the instructions. Since I already have an account, I'm just going to add a new project. In previous videos, we took a look how to clone the Launchpad project locally and set it up. We also created a new repo to allow us to deploy our project as our own. So definitely check out previous videos. In the meantime, we're going to get started. Here I have a repo which has both my Strapi and my Next.js project. Our Strapi backend has already been deployed. So now we're going to take a look on how to deploy our Next.js project. In Vercel, I'm going to click Add New, click on Project. The GitHub branch that I have, it's called Testing Launchpad. So I'm going to go ahead and click Import. In the root directory, we want to click Edit, and we want to make sure that we select our next folder. This is where our Next.js project lives and click Continue. Taking a look at the complementary blog post, we need to make sure that we have these environmental variables set in our Next.js project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you where to find your next public API URL, which is going to be our Strapi Cloud instance, also how to find our image host name. And then we'll go ahead and create our preview secret. Here in my Strapi dashboard, here is my Launchpad Strapi backend. If I click on it, here you could see that I have the app URL. I'm going to go ahead and copy it to clipboard. In Vercel, we're going to select environmental variables and we're going to go ahead and add our first one. I'm going to paste in my URL. And most important part, we don't want to include the admin portion. We just want the HTTPS, the name of our app.com. And this is going to be our next public API URL. Let's add our next one. This one is a bit tricky. I'm going to go ahead and copy the original URL. And I'm going to paste it in. The difference here is that our media files live in a different place. It's the name of our project dot media dot strappy app dot com. Just quick correction here. If you take a look at image host name, let's edit. When you're adding your host name, you don't need to add the HTTPS uh, part here. So make sure that it's just the name of your project.media.strapiapp.com. And another way to find this in our project, if you go to our media library and select any one of the image, copy the link to the URL. If we explore the URL name, you could see that we have our project name that media dot strappy app dot com. That's pointing to where your files are stored on your server. The naming convention, it's the name of your app media dot strappy app dot com. Once we point it to the correct address and make sure that we set it to the correct environmental variable name, which is image underscore host name. And finally, we need to add our preview secret. For a preview secret, we want to create any random string. We could do this in our terminal with the following command. This is going to generate a random string. Let's go ahead and copy it. Once we have our string here, we could go ahead and click the deploy button. This is going to start the deployment process. You can also find all the details here in the blog post that is linked in the description. And I'll be back once our project deploys. Nice. Now that our project is deployed, we could continue to dashboard and we could see the deployed project by clicking the visit button. Nice. And here we could see our Launchpad demo application is successfully deployed. You could now play around with it. You could update the content, make it your own. And this is all powered by a project deployed on Strapi Cloud. And now your non-technical editors could easily go ahead into the content manager and update any of the articles or resources as they look fit. 
And as your editor is able to work through the content, they could actually open the preview and take a look at it. At the moment, we're going to see the sad face. This was expected. Remember how we created our API token here that we added as our environmental variable in our Next.js application? We actually have to use the same key in our Strapi Cloud account. So let's go ahead and update that. We could go into settings and we're going to navigate to our variables. So let's click add variable button. The first one we're going to add is our client URL. And this is the URL of our deployed Next.js project. So make sure that you get and grab your project's URL. And let's go ahead and paste it in here. And make sure you remove the trailing slash. Finally, we need to add our preview secret. And this should be the same secret key we used in our Vercel application. So if you go to settings, here in settings, if we navigate to your environmental variables, we already set our preview secret for our front end. This should be the same key that we set in our Strapi backend. So go ahead and copy it. And here, let's go ahead and paste it in. Once you set your client URL and your preview secret, go ahead, click save. And for changes to take effect, let's go back to our Launchpad dashboard and we're going to redeploy our project. Once your Strapi backend redeploys, you should be able to navigate to the Content Manager one more time. Select one of the articles, click on Open Preview, and now you should see your preview from your front-end Next.js application. So in this video, we took a look how to deploy our Strapi backend to Strapi Cloud, how to deploy our Next.js application to Vercel. And now you have a cool working demo that you could play around with or use to jumpstart your project. In future videos, we're going to actually walk through how we built the Next.js starter with the Strapi backend to give you more details around best practices of how to use Strapi and Next.js together. But with that being said, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.